All right, everybody. We're going to give another minute or two, but while we're waiting, where are you guys from? So obviously this is a national event. We're sponsoring both the girls and boys, 16s and 18s, national hard courts. There's over 100 people registered for this call. So, man, looks like they're going to miss out. While we're waiting, guys, just open up that chat. Where are you guys from? Rep your hometown. Where are you going to be traveling from? I know boys are going up to Michigan. You girls are going out to Southern California. We're here in South Florida. I live in Delray. Where are you guys from? Michigan, Minnesota. Nice. South Carolina. Keep it rolling. Maryland, Michigan. I guess the Midwest. Ontario. What's up, Steph? <laughs> Michigan. Coach Chad, we got another Chad. We got another Chad in the building. Oh, that. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> What's up, Chad? <laughs> Texas. All right. Where else? That's it? My Man, money, Florida? No my, money's on, my money's on Chad to win Kalamazoo. <laughs> Coach Chad always jokes he's the only Chad in the room. Can't say it today. All right, we got some stragglers flowing in here. I think we'll go ahead and kick this. All right, all right. Well, hello, everybody. My name's Andrew. I'm one of the coaches here at Complete Performance Tennis, where uh, we work with the mental game. We work with performance. It's something that uh, we all know is really important, especially for you guys playing at the level you guys are playing. Uh, but it's really ambiguous. You know, it's really like no one can really put their finger on it. Whenever anybody's talking about things like confidence or belief or trust or anything like that, you know, it just seems ambiguous. It seems hard to put your finger on it. And um, I think that's really why we're unable to work in that uh, area of our game. But we all know the inner game, um, man, it really decides and determines most of the matches. So today we're really going to be unpacking um, kind of the basics as far as the mental game or the inner game goes. But what's cool is you're going to have tangible takeaways that you can actually use in this upcoming tournament um, right away. Now, before I get going, I'll introduce Chad here, the other CP coach. You want to say hi, Chad? What's up, everybody? Happy to be here. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Cool, cool. And Coach Tim is on the call too. Tim, I don't know if you're ready to turn your camera on. He's only me and Chad are going to be presenting today. But Tim, if you wanted to unmute and or turn your camera off, say hi so everyone can see all three coaches here. Um, he might not be prepared. He sits and watches us. All right. No worries. Say hi, Tim, if you, if you come back on. Um, cool. So really what we're going to do today. Oh, there you go. <laughs> hey, everybody. Great event. This is going to be a great class. I can't wait to even hear it myself. Uh, coaches are going to do a great job. You're going to be able to take some some things away from this class that are going to help you perform at a higher level. So that's what we're all hoping for. So anyway, welcome, everybody. Thanks, Tim. For those of you guys that don't know, um, that man just speaking on the screen, uh, his daughter is Bethany Maddox-Sands. Um, she's an Olympic gold medalist. She's won 10 Grand Slams, 31 doubles titles on the WTA. Um, and so he has a lot of wisdom. He's been doing this for decades. He's our senior coach here at Complete Performance. Um, so thanks for sharing that, Tim. Without further ado, let's dive right into this. What we're going to do is I'm going to cover in the beginning of this class here, I'm going to cover just a little bit of understanding so we can actually know what the inner game is and how we can really ignite this ability to show up um, and play our best when it matters most. Um, and once we kind of get some of those fundamentals out of the way, I'm going to pass it off to Chad and he's going to share um, the seven primary ways that uh, we work on the mental game. OK, so Chad's going to share some takeaways that you can literally take and put on put into practice or put into action on the court this upcoming weekend and week. Um, and you can immediately see results. That's really why I was drawn to um, performance. I've been an athlete my whole entire life. I played Division one. Um, after I stopped playing, I started coaching. Um, and I specifically started coaching in the mental game. Um, performance has always fascinated me because it's about the now. It's about you, the when we're talking about performance, we're talking about unlocking. That's the name of this masterclass, unlocking peak play. 
as you guys are all, you know, obviously training, you know, all week, every day, lots of hours. And we're kind of used to this incremental uh, gains that we make with our outer game over time as we put in the work. Um, but what we're going to talk about here and what we're going to share is how can we see those those kind of quantum gains where we can make this giant leap, where we can unlock um, some of this capability that's been within us um, that maybe we haven't been able to access or just hasn't been finding expression out on the match court. All right. So we're going to kind of dive into um, into why that is. Now, I'm really excited for this class in particular. We run these every single Thursday. We sponsor tournaments all over the nation. We run this every single Thursday. Um, there was well over 100 people registered for this event. So those people that are going to be watching the recording are definitely going to miss out on some of this live action here. Um, but then, yeah, we're going to end this. We're going to end this whole uh, shebang with a Q&A. So if you guys got personal questions or specific questions, just kind of hold those to the end um, and we'll be able to cover those as well. All right. Now, I'm really excited about this class in specific because of the level that you guys are playing at. Now, you guys, you know, with the Olympics being on TV and everything, you know, you guys are the future of tennis. Um, and you guys specifically out of the, you know, however many hundreds of athletes play at each of these tournaments, um, you guys are the cream of the crop. You guys are the ones that showed up and said, I want to know how to unlock my mental game. I want to know how to unlock this capability that's within my possession. Um, and so the first thing I want to do is give you a, a round of applause. And I want to help you understand that the level that you're playing at, it's really, really exciting because of, uh, because of one reason everyone's really good. Now, when everyone's really good, what happens is the mental game or our ability to, to be on and to really like play, like come out to play and show up to play. Um, you could, you could go really deep in this tournament. You can win this tournament. So the thing I love about the level that you guys are playing at is every single one of you guys are really, really good. Every single person in this entire, in this entire tournament can win the tournament. That's how close the competition is at this level. And so I want to open your guys' mind to that, that um, we don't have to expect the same old results to happen or we don't need to be nervous. We can understand that um, the level is so close uh, here that uh, each and every single one of you really have an opportunity um, to win this tournament, to go super deep in this tournament. Um, but it really comes down to how, how we're showing up. Um, you know, it's funny, whenever I'm watching, me and Chad are watching – you know, tennis on TV or something, and we're trying to guess who's going to win the match or something. And it really always comes down to whoever shows up, whoever's, whoever's has the good day. So what does that mean? Because that's, you know, kind of another ambiguous thing. Oh, I had a good day. It was clicking. I was on. Um, what does that mean? Like, how do we actually, I don't want to say recreate that, but how do we make that a more consistent experience for ourselves? Um, and so, Let's kind of let's kind of dive right into this. Let's kind of dive into the weeds of um, the weeds of our mental game. All right. Every single person on this call, every single person on this call has came to this call for a little bit of a different reason. Maybe you struggle with something. Maybe you just want to activate your mental game and, and, you know, really play at your peak. But every single person has come onto this call for a little bit of a different reason. All right. Um, but I can summarize why everyone came into this call with one thing. All right. There's a level we all know we can play at. And when we seem to be clicking or it seems to be on or we seem like I just showed up or I just had a good day, we seem to play pretty close to this level, this level that we know we can play at. Um, but the truth, but what usually happens is we don't play at that level. All right. We have what we call here at CP a performance gap. All right. And it's the distance between the level you typically play at and the level you know you can play at. Now, this performance gap is the most important thing to understand about the mental game or performance because this is the craziest thing. If you close this performance gap, you're in contention to win this tournament because everybody can play at a certain level and be able to compete um, well enough to, to go deeper win this tournament. All right. So this performance gap is really um, is how we begin to outline why do I play at this level, but I know I can play at this level. And the thing is, everyone's got a performance gap. Even if Alcaraz is on this call, you know, he kind of has a performance gap too. <laughs> Maybe his is a little bit smaller, but we all have this area um, where I want to step into more of my power and be able to express more of myself, all right? But there's two ways that we see this performance gap. And one of them is the trap. If we see the performance gap through the lens of the trap, we are going to be infinitely stuck chasing our peak, trying to get better and trying to see those performance gains that we want to see. 
But there's a second way that we can see this performance gap. And if you see it this, this the truthful way, what happens is it empowers us and helps us understand how we can get on top of our game and play from our peak consistently. All right. Now, before we can outline this performance gap, um, you got to outline it for yourself. All right. And so this is how we're going to do it. And so this is this is where this class is a little engaging. All right. So I need your guys' um, engagement. The first thing I want you to do is think about your current UTR. All right. You can round, you can, it doesn't have to be specific, but think about your current UTR. That number, which is a reflection of the past, that represents the level you typically play at. Now, we typically define ourselves by this number and we say, this is the level that I'm at. And then we compare ourselves left and right to other people. But the truth is that number, it represents the past. And I don't know about you guys, but I've never stepped on the tennis court and said, hey, I won last match. So I'm definitely winning this match. No one in their right mind has that kind of inflated confidence, all right? And so um, we have to understand that this number is a reflection of the past. We don't want to identify with that number. We need to understand that our capability right now in this tournament that's right before you right now, you have the ability to play um, more at your peak, all right? But we, but we still got to contend with this performance gap. Everyone's got one. And I, I have compassion because it can be kind of confusing, um, but we're here to simplify this, all right? So... The first number is your current UTR. I want you to assign a UTR value to the level you know you can play at. The level you know you can play at. All right, so just think about how when you're flowing, you're in your zone, it's clicking, you're on. I, what That play, if you had to assign a UTR value to it, what would it be? All right, and in the comments right now, I want you to say what your gap is. Is your gap 0.5 UTR? Is it one UTR, is it two UTR, is it five UTR? What is your performance gap, all right? Just the difference between the two numbers. We don't need either of those numbers. We just need the difference. So open up the chat and just drop it in there. Let's see what your guys' performance gaps are. Outlining this number can be one of the most empowering things. We'll, we'll, you'll see. Cool. One, one. Keep it rolling. Two. One. 1. 1.5, 1. 1.5, 1. 1.5. I've heard everything. A I've heard lot zero. Of be made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is a lot of games. I've heard imagine, zero. I've imagine heard if seven. you played two. Imagine if you played 1.5, 1 UTR points higher for this tournament. Yeah. Would it win yeah. the tournament? <laughs> so, all right. So this is the cool thing about this performance gap. Thanks for sharing that, y'all. So this is the cool thing about this performance gap. All right. So the trap, the the silly way of seeing your gap is saying, poor me, I'm down here at this lower UTR and maybe someone will help me get to this higher UTR. Maybe if I try hard enough, I can get to this higher UTR. But this keeps us in an endless loop of trying, all right? Um, and trying is really a trap. Trying never produces any higher performances. Trying is a way of engaging in your action um, while hoping for something to happen. You're not intending for something to happen, all right? So um, that's the trap that says, I'm here. I need to do something to get here. The truth is this whole entire gap actually represents a chunk of capability that's in your possession. It's in your possession. All right. So if you know you can play at this level, that means, that means you've, you've done it before. That means you've seen glimpses of it. That means deep in your gut or in your heart, you know, you can play at this level. All right. So what that means is that this distance, this gap actually represents capability that's in your possession. That's in your possession. This is a big difference because if something's in my possession, I need to access it, become aware of what I have, and then learn to give it, which is very different than trying to get better, looking at the outcome to see if I did it good enough and trying to get better and trying to get better. All right. So performance is really this inward turning of our attention to connect to what it is that we have to give. Because if I can learn to give what I have in an unrelenting way, nothing can stop me. Nothing and no one can stop me. I can become this unstoppable force. All right. And so this gap represents a chunk of capability that's in your possession. All right. Now, the fact that this capability is, is at your disposal um, really puts on the forefront being present. Because if you're, being, if you're not being present, yeah, you can't access that capability if you're not in the present moment. Like you all have heard stuff about the present moment or being present or mindfulness and stuff like that. Let me just break it down real, real easy for you, all right? 
everyone's got a performance gap more or less. There's only one reason why this even exists in the first place. All right. Your attention, which is different than your thinking, different than your thought process, those regurgitated words that can tend to go through your skull on repeat. All right. Your attention and your thought process are different things. Now, when your attention goes into your thoughts about the past or your attention goes into the future, there's less attention in the present moment. All right. It's that simple. If your attention is in the past, hung up on last point, what was um, this always happens. I'm afraid that this might happen again. If your attention is in the past or your attention is in the future, even one moment ahead of yourself, worried about where your ball is going to go that you're hitting right now, if part of your attention is in the past or it's in the future, there's less attention that you have at your disposal now in the present, where every single point you ever play, it goes down in the present moment. So I got to be present for it. And this is really pointing at the, the number one truth or the, number, the, the essence of what performance and peak performance is all about is it's centered around the present moment. It has to be. Every single point you've ever played has happened in and through the present moment. So if I'm not present, I'm not here for this point. I can't play this point. I'm not here where the whole thing's happening. All right? Now, you, people at your level and athletes at your level understand that you can't just force your, your performances. All right, there's this element of naturalness. Um, you need to be able to be spontaneous and adaptable um, to anything that might come your way, right? Just like when we're returning a serve, the answer of what you need to do, it reveals itself in real time. If you're not present, if you're looking at the airplane in the sky or looking at the dog bark on the outside of the court, you are not bringing in the totality of the match. And so less of you just meets the match court. Less of you actually finds expression. Less of you shines because you're too busy shining your attention in the past or in the future. All right. Now that means bringing my attention back to this moment, becoming more present is, is the, is the primary way that we close this performance gap. It's the only way. All right. Cause the only reason there's a gap, yo, you're in the past. Yo, you're in the future. That's the only reason why there's a gap. All right. So when I bring my attention back to this moment, I empower my present self to unleash the game that I do have. I stop concerning myself with who's watching, who I'm playing, what I think I need to do, what happened last point, what might happen this point. I'm, I'm not concerning myself with that. I'm not putting my attention in those places and taking attention away from the action of play, from where execution actually occurs. All right. So the essence of performance is really presence, being present in the moment, being able to be in the present. And the more present you are, just think about it. You're in the position to play. You're in the position to play. And being in the position is how you strike that balance of making it happen and letting it happen. It's the only way. If, if you're not in the position to be present, you're either too busy trying to make it happen or you're being lethargic and you're kind of giving up and you're just letting it happen. When we use our willpower, which is like everyone on this call, athletes in general, you got massive willpower. All right. If you use your willpower to try and get an outcome, um, man, that's how we interfere with our performance. That's how we make it more complicated than it has to be. All right. When I use my willpower to be present, that is an act of trust in my present self. All right. And we all know how it feels like when we trust ourselves, when we really trust our strokes and our game, man, the ball just flies off our racket. So, so notice this difference. I don't use my willpower to try to get what I don't have. That's an action fueled by lack. That's an action fueled by inadequacy. That's an action that's coming from an empty place. I'm here to give what I have. I'm going to use my effort to be here. So I'm in the position to engage and respond to what's going on the match court. I'm going to be, have my head fully in the point because I'm playing from my heart. I'm not thinking about what I'm doing. I'm allowing my game to flow from a, a heightened or greater state of presence. All right. So that's the main thing that we want to understand. The only reason we got a performance gap, your attention in the past, your attention in the future. Bringing attention back to this moment is how you empower your present self. It's how it's an act of trust in the present self. And from a state of presence, from a state of non-reactivity, I'm not reacting to anything. I'm not uh, excessively thinking about things. I'm not worrying about stuff. I'm not creating turbulent emotions within me. Um, it's from this cool, calm, centered place that my best play spontaneously flows from.
And that's a natural byproduct of learning how to be present. All right. Now being present, you know, it doesn't necessarily happen in a flash. It's something that we're going to be learning probably, you know, for the rest of our lives. Um, but there is things that you can do immediately that can, that can, that can increase uh, the state of presence that you find yourself in. Um, and you're, you'll be able to play closer to your peak. All right. So presence itself, you know, it's a little bit, again, generic. It's a little bit, um, you know, ambiguous, like, okay, thanks, Andrew, be present. Like, how do, how do I go ahead and do that? Um, and so this is what we did here at CP. We created seven mental skills. All right. Seven mental skills, That's seven, eight, seven mental skills. All right. And these seven mental skills, they represent the seven ways that you can be present in the match, in the point. All right. So these seven mental skills are literally the like pathways or gateways to your peak. All right. If being at my peak means I'm present, I'm at my peak already. I'm here to express the fullness of my capability. These seven mental skills would represent seven different ways to, to realize that you're at the peak already, to come to the peak and to be able to sustain that, that state of peak play. All right. Seven different ways of doing that. And each, each of these different mental skills, they play a different role. All right. So here at CP, we, we, no matter how advanced a student gets, uh, we work within these seven mental skills. They're a compre, they're a way to comprehensively understand your inner game and what's within you. And when you understand that, Ladies and gentlemen, let me just be very clear. There's nothing in your way. There's nothing stopping you. If you ignite all of these mental skills within yourself, yeah, you're going to be this unstoppable force on the court. And really, that's what it comes down to. Um, you know, like I was saying, I was an athlete my entire life. There's nothing better than feeling unstoppable. There's nothing better than feeling unstoppable. So the message that I have for you guys is when you become immovable, you have this immovable presence, you say nothing can shake me, nothing can touch me, nothing can break my focus. When you develop that kind of immovable presence, you're in the position to become this unstoppable force. You're in the position to express yourself in a way where no one can stop you. Um, it's unreserved. There's no hesitation. Um, and that's really what the mental game is all about. We try to keep it really simple and help you guys understand um, it's really not complicated when we can learn how to be present in these specific different ways. Um, we're putting ourselves in a brand new position and creating this freedom, the freedom to play our game. Um, and so that ball can just, uh, you know, come off the racket with more ease. So Chad, without any further ado, I'm going to pass it off to you. You mind breaking down these seven mental skills for everybody? Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate it, Andrew. So yeah, I'm going to go over the seven mental skills that Andrew's talking about, these seven ways that we can get present on the tennis court. And for a couple of things before I get started, one, just kind of drop your definitions that you have for some of these words like confidence or composure, because we're going to kind of build up a new definition. You know, most people have a definition for confidence, and it has something to do with that that's not in their control. For example, you win 10 points in a row, you feel a certain way, and all of a sudden the match takes a turn, you lose 10 points in a row, you, you feel a certain way, and a lot of people call that confidence coming, confidence going. That's not true confidence. That's not the confidence that we're going to talk about. So we're going to kind of reframe, reframe these mental skills. Another thing I want you to understand is that all seven of these exist within you right now. Just like you have that capability within you, you have all seven of these skills within you. And we're accessing them to various degrees under various um, levels of challenge. And the goal is, can we access more confidence when the challenge gets greater and greater and greater, right? And so those are the two things I want you to kind of understand. Let's just draw for definitions and then also understand that these skills are within us right now. And this is more of an unlocking what I already have and, and, and doing that through choice so that it's 100% in my control that, that makes confidence bulletproof. That makes composure bulletproof. No one can take those things away. And that's what we want as athletes. We want these inner states, these inner spaces, untouchable from, from the outside, from, from our opponent, things of that nature. That's what we're kind of um, shooting for. So I'm going to dive into it. And as I, go, as I go through the seven, I want you to think which one relates to you the most, which one resonates with you the most, or which one would be the biggest game changer if you activate 
because we're going to do something with that, that one um, later in the call, and it'll be something that you can um, apply directly onto uh, the match court, you know, coming up at the end of this week. All right. So we'll start at the bottom. The foundation is confidence. That's mental skill number one, confidence, confidence, confidence. Confidence is about showing up. That's completely in your control. This ability to completely show up to whatever is in, in front of you. It's about putting more of your attention, more of your presence into the court, less in your head, more into the court, staying connected to what it is going on in front of you and continuing to make the choice to show up and lean in no matter what happens, especially if it starts going unexpected or it's a greater challenge than expected, you lean into that and you start to cultivate this sense of unmovable uh, mentality, unshakable kind of presence. When you continue to make that choice, it starts to build up this like this feeling of like of like certainty that you that you're very grounded, literally grounded in in in, in where you stand and what you're here to do, and that's that's really confidence. Um, the second mental skill is composure. It's like the other side of the coin of confidence. If confidence is about showing up to what's in front of you and um, completely embracing it, composure is about showing up within yourself um, and completely embracing that. You see, what happens when we show up to challenge, usually it makes us feel a certain way. Or if, if we show up to something that happens unexpected or, or that is difficult, it makes us feel a certain way. And sometimes the uh, it's, it's, it, we, we just like want to push that away, shove it, distract, whatever. But no, we got to show up to that. We got to accept how we feel and really turn inward. And what happens is you start to cultivate um, a, 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 some inner calm, some less turbulence when you do that. And um, you, be, you get this inner space that's untouchable from anything that's happening in your outer space. That's true composure. So if confidence is showing up with what's in front of you, embracing it, not judging it, Composure is showing up with what's within you, how you're feeling it, embracing that, not judging it. And when you do those two things, what happens is you reclaim a tremendous amount of attention that was previously locked in suboptimal areas. You reclaim all this attention that was scattered. And that brings us to the third skill, focus. The third skill of focus is about reclaiming that attention and putting that attention on exactly the step you're taking, on exactly what's optimal in performance. You're gluing it to the activity that you're taking. You're gluing it to this ball, this swing, and all your attention's there. It's no longer a scattered disco ball, or it's no longer on a trampoline in the past and the future, the past and the future, last point, next point, last game, next game, last match, next match. It's not there. It's like super stabilized in the moment, so you're able to point it on what's optimal um, very easily. Uh, and that's that's focus. Um, when you're doing all three things, confidence, composure, focus, you're showing up to what's in front of you. You're showing up to what's within you. You're reclaiming your attention and you have ultimate control of your attention. When you do those three things at CP, we call it you're playing out of your mind. This is what every, every athlete wants to play out of your mind. You're kind of getting out of your head and, and you're playing in your heart. You're connecting to a whole new fuel source of, of your passion you're free. You're free from these limitations of um, negative thought processes or judgments or faulty belief systems. You're kind of like free from that. And so you're, you're light, you're light, you're, you're happy. You're playing with passion, not with all this, this like grind and effort. You're playing with some like passion. Like I love this. I live for this and I'm here and, I, and, I'm, and I'm, and I'm being me fully. That's, that's heart. That's the peak state. Um, whenever you're in your zone, you're really kind of in aligned with this mental skill. And so those three, those first three skills were kind of leading us to this place. The next three skills, that's about playing from this place. That's about expressing yourself more fully from this place. All right. And there's two skills for that. We got command and we got flow. And um, command is about taking charge of what you can control and what, what you can control peaks at ball strike. So it means going for your shot with no hes hesitation, no reservation, bold, and just going for it. That's command, boom, ball strike, just going for that shot. On the flip side of that, flow is about letting go with what you can't control, but staying in step with it. So, and that peaks 
that peaks when your opponent strikes the ball. So it's like staying open and responsive and fluid to what your opponent's doing. That's flow. So command, going for it, flow, um, letting it go. Command, making it happen. Flow is letting it happen. And this is this balance that all of our peak performances had this kind of balance. It wasn't one way or the other. It was an awesome mixture of it because tennis is a back and forth like that. The point is designed like that. And that kind of brings us to the seventh skill of, of play. That's staying completely present in the point, in the unfolding of the point, in the back and forth, where you're able to go and command, then go and flow, then go and command, then go and flow. And you're in this spontaneous dance, spontaneous response to what they're doing, then the spontaneous creation to what you're doing. And that's play. That's the seventh skill. And so now that you had just a little crash course on that, a little bit of um, understanding what it is we're talking about when we use these seven mental skills, I would love to hear from, from you guys which one resonates with you the most? Which one would you like to tap into um, this this um, for this tournament? Let me know in the chat. Really curious to see where everyone's at, which one is speaking to you, because I can dive in just a little bit more on, on how you can specifically activate that. So let me hear in the chat, which one resonates with you the most? Is it confidence? Is it composure? Is it focus? Is it heart? Is it command? Is it flow? Or is it flow? We got Victoria said flow. So keep it coming. And I'm just going to address these as they come. Um, Noah has got command. Great. So Victoria, I'll start with you uh, for flow. This is what you want to do for flow, Victoria. You know, when you're like returning, you're returning to serve and you're like in this like state of readiness because you don't know if they're going to do a forehand or a backhand. So you're like, your, your body's like ready. And your like mentality is like ready to respond and you're kind of like light on your feet where you're really open to, to what you're going to do. You want to get in that state mentally and physically off in the point a little bit faster. So like when you hit the ball to the other side, you want to get back into that open and responsive state, like much, much quicker and more stable. So instead of hitting the ball and judging where it's going or lingering on where it's going, kind of get into that like return a serve mode uh, mentally and physically where you're really open, opening your attention and you're um, reading and you're responding and you're being really fluid in the body. So if you just, just do that little switch and, and you do that in the flow of the point, every time after every time you hit the ball, you'll start to get in the flow of the back and forth where you really kind of, zone in the ball when you hit it but you kind of open and get ready to respond and just get in that back and forth and it'll you'll stay you'll stay in this kind of flow in, in the point so that's what i would recommend for flow um noah is like that's like the flip side um i just kind of briefly stated but no if you want to trigger command you got to make the decision i'm gonna go for my shot this tournament i'm gonna go for my shot zero hesitation no reservation. I'm just going to go for my shot. I'm going to go for my shot. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the, that's the mentality. I'm going to rip it and you're going to close in on the ball, man, and put your entire being into the ball. Don't just hit the ball with your muscle memory, hit the ball with your, your whole mind and body, hit the ball with your soul. If you can tap into that, hit it with everything you got, hit the ball. It's going to, it's going to be a, energy into the ball man it's gonna make your mentality kind of in attack mode now obviously you got a personality you got a strategy you got game style that's all great i'm not saying to change any of that um but if you picked it this probably syncs with your game style and strategy where it's like yo i'm gonna rip it man no fear no fear no fear no fear like noah think back to all the matches you played in your in your whole life i don't know if you're in the 16s or the 18s but all you played a lot of matches to get to this point. What if you would have just went for every single shot and you would be in such a different place, but no, we like, we like play it safe or we like try to control, try to control the ball rather than rip it rather than rip it like a rock star just rip it. So that'd be my advice for you. Noah. Holger said composure. AD said composure and everyone else on the call, put your, put your word in, yo, we got, 27 there's a few coaches so 20 something and four people dropped a word i want to hear some more some more skills everyone type it in type it in 
time to engage y'all time to engage um so holger for composure and, and kd kd said said composure kd like kevin durant kevin durant he's he's composed um you know kevin durant man easy that's in his like his uh in his ig name is easy easy money right so you can kind of tap into that composure is about being easy composure is about slowing down settling in man like extend your exhale extend your exhale a little bit especially in between points bring your attention back to your body whether it's your um your breath or your feet on the ground or your grip just bring your attention back into the body slow down you know it's like you know slow slow and smooth smooth as smooth as fast type stuff so if you slow slow down slow your breath slow your movement you know go back to your towel take it take a breath add some space in between your activities that you're doing like that you're going to really cultivate composure take charge of that attention put it put it in the body put it in the body that's what really and and tap into what you're feeling Composure is a big about on what you're feeling, what you're feeling. And so feel what you're feeling. Just feel what you're feeling. Don't judge it. Don't suppress it. If it's something that you don't like, if it's a feeling you don't like, like a reaction or anger, frustration, a feeling you don't like, just feel that. It's going to what it's going to be the same thing that that every that every emotion had. It's going to it's going to dissipate. So that's what I would do. Um, and then Katie for focus and Shauna for focus uh, it was about taking charge of your attention. So stay in account of where your attention is. Let's say you notice your attention's on something that's not optimal, aka it's not something that you're doing right now. So it's not optimal. You, you recognize that and you put your attention in the moment, like fuse it. Right now, your attention is often fused with your thoughts. That's why it's all over the place. As an athlete, you want to fuse that attention with the present action you're taking, you want to fuse it with your body, with the step you're taking. And so you're just reclaiming that attention and, and pointing it on, on the current action um, you're doing. That's what I do for focus. Uh, Monica for confidence, man, you open up the fence. You've got, you're walking in this chain link fence. There's going to be a 3D, it's this 3D box of where this ball can come into. Just decide that whatever happens in this chain link fence, I'm going to show up to and I'm going to lean in no matter what. There could be, you could be playing the number one seed. You could be playing, it, it doesn't matter anything that happens. I'm, I'm going to show up fully to it, fully to it. And what you can do is literally put more of your attention into your senses, like literally into your eyes, what you're seeing, what you're hearing. Like, like make your body more alert, make your body more ready, put your attention into your senses, let that, those senses pour into the court and make that connection uh, airtight. No distractions can kind of penetrate that and nothing can kick that connection away. And you're going to cultivate this, this feeling of, uh, of unshakable um, confidence and certainty. So that's what I would do for confidence. And then Victoria said heart. A big one for heart, Victoria, is your breath, is your breath. So it's kind of, you know, in between points, in between points, just come back to your breath on changeovers, just come back to your breath, come back to your breath. Um, it's a great way to just stay out of the head too much. Uh, when the point is going on, man, really, fo really focus on that exhale. Exhale when you hit, inhale when they hit, exhale when you hit, inhale when they hit. In between points, you're still in that breath, and you're just in that breath that whole time. You're going to find yourself kind of getting really zoned with that. And so that's what I would recommend for that. Um, and then lastly, um, like, like Andrew was saying, these seven skills are what we work on on a daily basis with, with all of our athletes, um, no matter the level. Athletes pushing into the ATP and WTA, they're refining these skills. And we have a lot of cool um, tools, programs, uh, we do on court stuff, whatever, really cool stuff. But one thing that we wanted to kind of offer you guys is, is some tools that you can literally plug in, put, put on your headphones and actually activate some of these states very in a very effortless and engaging way. So Andrew, do you want to just share maybe just a little bit on that? And then, um, what we can open up into Q and a after that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I want everyone to just stop here. Everyone can take a breath. 
There's a lot of new information. Um, I know you guys are about to compete, and that's really why we wanted to go kind of above and beyond and give you some of our best tools that you can use right before this tournament. All right. And I just want you guys to imagine, can you imagine if these skills were activated within your game? Like they were untouchable. You were in control of them and you could turn them on and keep them on um, no matter the situations that you find yourself. I mean, unshakable confidence, nothing in your outer environment can touch you. Untouchable composure. You have a clear and calm inner state that is conducive to creativity. It has the perception to see the possibilities on the court. An unbroken focus where you're glued to the present action you're taking. There's no amount of anxiety getting in between you and your activity. You're able to execute uh, flawlessly. Heart. You're able to stay in the point. You're able to be present no matter what is, is coming your way. And you're able to uh, breathe and regulate all the demand that you experience on the court. Command. You're able to put 100% of yourself into every single ball that you hit and flow. You're able to stay completely in step with your opponent, no matter what they're doing. All of that is bringing is activating the skill of play where your whole game comes together. These skills, they're quite literally putting you in the position for you to play your game. All right. Now I'm just going to share my screen here and show you guys something. Um, I know many of you have probably seen this before, uh, but I know some of you haven't. This is the complete performance portal. Um, so this is essentially been decades in the making, um, decades and decades of experience that we've done with juniors, collegiate athletes, professionals. We've taken all of that. We've put it into one site. All right. So there's a crazy amount of uh, material inside here, but everything centers around the blueprint. All right. This uh, program that allows you to master these seven skills. Now, what we want to do for you guys is we want to take a small part of this blueprint out. All right. We're going to take the tool that you specifically use right around competition time before you perform these pre match tools. We're going to take each one of them from each skill and we want to give that to you guys. All right. So we created this. Um, there's a little bit of a membership site here. So it's members only access. Um, and you essentially get access to seven different tools. All right. So you can go on our site right now and you can buy this. Uh, for hundreds of dollars or what you can do and we're offering it to this master class specifically is you can text the number that we put in the chat so chad you want to drop chad's going to drop his personal phone number in the chat all right and if you guys want access to these tools and have access to this membership site right here and be able to use these tools whenever you want to use them confidence composure Heart, command, flow, all these tools, they're like 10 to 15 minutes long. You can repeat them. You can put them in over and over again. All you have to do is literally put these things in and the exercise centers you into, into uh, a specific skill of your choosing. All right. So if you want these, um, go ahead and text your name and your email to the number that's on the screen. All right. Um, let me hop back in here. So did you drop it in there? Cool. Yeah. yeah. So. So text, so text that number, guys. All right. So you can either go on our site, you can buy it, or you can get it right now for free. We're going to send you all of these exercises. Okay. There's going to be seven main exercises. Um, it's absolutely phenomenal. All right. So just make sure you text that number before this session is over. And um, we'll make sure you get that. If not tonight, we'll get it to you tomorrow morning. So you can start using that in preparation for your tournament. All right. This is some of the best tools that we have from our premier program that literally 100% of our athletes participate in. Um, so they're, they're pretty amazing. Uh, with that being said, we're going to open up the rest of the time to Q and a, um, it's been a little bit of a quiet crowd here. Uh, so you guys got any questions? I want to hear where you guys are coming from. What's on your mind, um, approaching this, you know, quote unquote, big tournament for y'all. Um, anything you can ask anything. All right. Um, some that's personal to you, some that's generic, some that's unique, um, you know, we play a game here at CP, stump the coaches, ask your hardest question. What have you always wanted to know about the ambiguous mental game? All right, we'll be here to answer it. So let it rip, y'all. Feel free to unmute yourself or you can just drop it in the chat. And we'll go ahead and get those questions answered. Anybody got anything? Another thing to think about it is what's what do you think is preventing you from playing at your peak? Why do you have a performance gap? Is there a specific uh, anything, anything like that? And we can we can help you know illuminate it. Um, so no pressure. It's been a great call so far. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, take take your time. Uh, appreciate everyone texting me right now. Maybe they're 
got got quite a few texts. I'm I'm definitely gonna get those motiv um motivational meditations. They're really like those seven tools that Andrew was talking about. They're motivational meditations and they're they're like a combination of getting just getting completely zoned and hyped at the same time for your match. So I'll get those to you guys tomorrow morning. So thanks for sending those texts. Reaching out. But yeah, any questions? All right, Victoria. What's a good way to reset yourself before serving to make the most out of your service game? Any mantras that can help? Ooh, mantras. Um, let's see. Which um, which skill did you choose? You chose flow. Okay. Um, you know, you know, there's a mantra. My, my favorite mantra. We use it really in the skill of composure, but it, you can apply it to flow too. The mantra is slow down and feel. Slow down and feel. Um, what's really interesting is the best thing that you can do at any given time, more or less, is actually pause. All right, because think about it. The, the mind has so much forward momentum. All right. So we're like getting ahead of ourselves. Um, attention into the future is anxiety. Uh, and that produces tension inside the body. So when we bring our attention back to our body, we're really easing um, that anxiety. So you can slow down and feel that can be a mantra. Um, but really, you know, when I, when I feel my body that, you know, you're reestablishing your mind body connection. Um, you know, we think, that like, I need to play at a certain level, but really you, you, you learn to actually hold a state of presence that produces a level of play. So I'm not the one making my performance happen with action. Again, I'm becoming present and, and allowing my game to flow from here. So when you remember that, Victoria, you bring your attention back to your body, you take a breath, you slow down and you feel the, the act of bring your attention to your sensory experience, to your, to your inner experience. Um, and slowing down and pausing and feeling what you're feeling, you're literally strengthening the mind-body connection in that moment. And so by the time you serve, your mind-body connection has more momentum and your thought patterns have less momentum. Um, so that's, that's, what I, that's what I would say. Um, and let's, let's, let the serve just flow. Let the serve flow. Sometimes I like to say, um, don't decide where you're serving before you serve. Let the decision and the action happen at the same time. That might be a little challenging for some of you guys, but it's an exercise we do with our athletes a lot. Let the decision and the action happen at the same time. That's how much I trust myself. That's how much I'm just present with the present action that I'm taking. Um, I'm excited to see what's going to happen. There's literally no way to fail because me expressing myself fully is success. Success isn't an A. Success isn't a W. Success is me in full expression. Because when me, when I am in full expression, I don't have a performance gap. And when I don't have a performance gap, I'm taking control of everything I can control. I don't got to stress about anything else. So hopefully that helps there, Victoria. If you have a follow-up, just drop it, drop it in the chat again. Yuan, how to overcome the nervousness when you compete with the opponent who has lower ranking UTR, especially in the first round? Great question. Few things here. Um, one of the biggest things that you can do is stop calling the person on the other side of the court your opponent. Start calling them your partner. Um, the truth of the matter is that 50% of your game was constructed by the opponents that you played. All right. So we're so fixated on beating opponents. We're literally not in step with them. Um, we're in opposition and opposition is fight or flight. That's survival. That's tension. That's tense in the body. All right. So start to see them as your partner and start to understand that your play elevates when you play with them versus play against them. When you play against them, you're, you're bringing tension into the body. Your level is actually dropping down. So that's the first thing I would say. Um, the second thing is um, I started out this call saying anybody can win this tournament. Anybody can win this tournament. So guys, like literally number one piece of advice, get the UTR stuff out of your head. Notice I didn't tell you to write your UTR in the chat. I told you to write your performance gap because the gap is the only thing that matters. The UTR doesn't, does not matter. It is not a reflection of who you are. It's not a, it's a reflection of who you were. It's a reflection of who your opponent was, but it's not a reflection of who they are today. It's, you know, we've like, there's this principle that says that like, you're, you only respect someone else to the extent that you respect yourself. So if you disrespect your opponent and, and, and literally 
you're belittling them by saying they're a lower they're a lower UTR. Like you don't want to play that game. You just just stop playing that whole entire game. Start seeing them. They're an infinite creator on the other side of the court. And I actually, I want the ball back. I hope they get the ball back. I'm here to expand my game. I'm trying to play at the highest level I can possibly play at. You notice we can begin to switch this and we can say it's not about the person's past and everything that's happened before this. I have the opportunity to express myself to the fullest and this opportunity is never going to come around again. Um, and I'm honestly, I'm grateful for whoever comes up, my partner on the other side of the court that I get to play with. Um, and I think if you do that, um, you want, I think if you do that, you, you'll feel very different. Your nervous system literally will not be in as much fight or flight. It'll be more calm. And when you're more calm, you have clarity. There's less tension in the body. Um, the parts of your brain that are responsible for creative things come online. Um, the part of your brain that's constantly identifying what's not good and bad and threatening, that part of your brain goes offline. But we got to we gotta start seeing the, the, the truth of the matter. And the truth of the matter um, is that every single player you play, you can be grateful to play them. Um, and you can play them as a brand new player because the, at the end of the day, like the points that you play against that person, they're going to be points that you've never played in your entire life. Um, and so that player and you coming together, it creates some brand new thing that you've never experienced before ever. So I want you locked in on that new experience, making the most of every single ball that that player sends your way. Um, and I think if you focus on that, you want, I think you're going to find um, you're just not battling on that level um, mentally anymore. So you won't struggle with it. Hopefully that helps. Feel free to drop a follow-up. Victor, Victor, iPhone 14. In practice, I can serve very well and hit my spots consistently. However, in tournaments, I struggle with my first serve percentage, which causes a lot of pressure on my service games. How can I start serving in tournaments like I do in practice? Boom. Great question. It's the classic. How do I compete in the same way that I do in practice? Um, so the number one thing to understand is there is a difference, all right? No matter how much we try to trick ourselves and make practice like competition or try to keep the, treat the competition like practice, don't even, don't even play that imaginary game. Just understand practice. You have more time and space. Competition, it's great. There's, no, there's less time and space. It's more live. And the cool thing is, is Victor, when something's more live, you just got to flow with it. You got to be there with it. We can't be involving my, the, the intellect to such an extent, the thinking mind. It's actually too slow to function at a fluid level in the unfolding of a point. All right. So we're missing serves and in, in first serves and matches. We're getting them in practice. Um, what I would do is I would, how does it feel to hit your serve, first serves in practice? Um, you can feel what it literally feels like, or you can feel like more internally, emotionally, kind of what that feels like to just have this kind of first serve. Um, and if you get familiar with that feeling, that can be an anchor point that you come back to when you're serving in competition. You can come back to that feeling, um, which is way more powerful than saying, I need to do something a certain way. Because then there's, again, you are trying to control your actions. When you're trying to control your actions, you actually create tension because you're attached to the outcome. You're no longer fully participating in the action of play which happens where you stand, you're using the action of play to get the ball somewhere and get the W, all right? So there's an ancient phrase that says, when you got one eye on your goal, you only have one eye to find your way, all right? And so this is a way that we put our attention into the future in like micro moments. But again, it's taking away um, attention from the present moment. Um, and when attention leaves the present moment, when we're so concerned, Victor, about getting the first serve in, my, see how your attention is actually in the future. And when that happens, the body, it actually copes with your lack of attention and how it copes is it creates tension. And when there's tension in the body, Victor, you're never going to be able to hit the serves you know how to hit. <laughs> it's like, you know, imagine me putting a brace that keeps your elbow straight. Like you're not going to hit the serve. You know what I'm saying? That's what tension in the body does. And that tension is a consequence of you not being present, not keeping your attention in this moment. Um, so you can connect to how it feels when you slay your serves and you're just ripping it and you can see how that feels. You can connect to that when you, when you compete. So you can anchor yourself in that feeling. Um, but you can also get excited um, to move beyond to new things and be beyond this pattern and beyond this. And so this is where the skill of focus comes in. If you're the kind of guy that goes, I want to just be beyond this first uh, serve issue or problem I have, you can literally connect your attention to the present action you're taking by literally feeling the action and no longer will your attention be in your thought process. It'll be in your life process, in your physical body. 
and and your uh, your subconscious, your muscle memory, which is your body, will actually be able to express itself how it knows how to do. You'll be able to execute how you know how to do. Um, so we can get excited about moving beyond this and just putting all that attention into our action and knowing that if I put all of my attention into my action, I'm actually going to find myself in a different place and I can stop expecting the same old stuff to happen again. So hopefully that helps there, Victor. Again, if you've got a follow-up, just drop it in. Victoria, that was great. Thank you. Some coaches say I should visualize the serve before I go to do it. Is that necessary or you just recommend trusting yourself when the time comes? Wonderful question. This is one of my favorite questions. Oh, man. Um, you know, I've done visualization practices that are that can be really, really effective. Um, but I typically don't do those in competition. Um, you know, when you do, when you visualize, you're using your imagination. All right. And when you're using your imagination, it becomes very easy to put too much attention into a psychological thought process versus the real life process that's happening. You're listening to me. I'm talking to you. Real life process is happening. Or I'm imagining what something might be in the future. I'm going into an imaginary thought process. Um, so my recommendation is doing that in the heat of competition might make it too hard to ground that attention back in your body so you can execute on what you visualize. But that visualization technique can be ridiculously effective um, when you do it from a, a, a calm and centered place, when you add a positive emotion to it, and when you really visualize the detailed line of where the ball is going to go from the place you strike it to the place that it's landing on the court, and you make that the line, you make the line as vivid as humanly possible, and you feel what it would feel like to strike that. And that's something you can do leading up to the tournament, um, but I just I wouldn't recommend doing it um, during competition time. But again, that's my that's my preference. So that might really help you. Yuan, you're welcome. Noah, how do you believe in yourself and build confidence when you're playing players who are rated a lot higher than you? Yeah, the rating thing, man. The the, the it's a great question, Noah. The rating thing, ratings. It's it's kind of like this. Let's say you win a match six four six four, and you go to your coach and you tell them, "Hey, I won the match six four six four." What does that really tell your coach? Does it really share any information besides the outcome of the games that happened in the match? Does it, did, could it, could ever, could you have been completely destroyed on the, on the games you, you, you know, lost and barely won deuce the games you won? You know what I'm saying? Like so many things can happen. So in the same way, we like to look at players like they are a nine UTR or an 11 UTR or whatever. And we say like, um, that's, that's what they are, but everyone's performance is fluctuating so much. You play points at a two UTR level sometimes. And you also play points at like, I don't know what your UTR is, but you know, 10, 11, 12. <laughs> you know, this is how much it's fluctuating in the match. This is why stabilizing our attention is so important. All right. Um, so the question, how do you believe in yourself and build confidence? Well, confidence is built in one. It's only built in the same exact way. All right. When your attention is in your thinking mind, you're judging your external environment. That is an action of insecurity. I'll say that whole thing again. When your attention is in your thinking mind, you're judging your external environment. That is an action of fear or insecurity. All right. And that insecurity or fear, the underlying thing that's driving those thoughts, um, that is what we experience as lack of confidence. All right, so we got to build confidence. So let's build confidence. So this is how I build confidence. I have to take my attention out of my thought process because thought process, that's future, that's past. You think around the moment. You don't think in the moment. You think about the past, you think about the future. All right, so, um, so how you build confidence is you put your attention literally into your senses, okay? Because Let's just say, like, you, you see, like, the two MMA fighters that are doing, like, the, the way the way in, like, the night before, and they're just all up in each other's face, but completely unreactive. I mean, sometimes they, like, <laughs> do something stupid, but that kind of non-reactivity is what actually confidence is. So confidence, no, if you really want to know what confidence is, I'll make it really clear. It's a quiet mind. It's a silent mind. It's one where no judgment is, is flowing through your mind. Because whatever you judge, you fear. And so every time you judge, you increase how much fear is inside you. So when we stop judging, the fear is going to begin to dissipate. And when I can put that attention into my sensory experience, 
I'm present with what's going on externally, but I'm not reacting. I'm allowing it to be just as it is. And that's the true mature state of confidence that you can cultivate by simply redirecting your attention and getting out of your thinking mind. Now, once you're out of your thinking mind, there is no this player is higher rated than me and or I'm higher rated than this person. That stuff begins to take a back seat and you start to understand that this match that you played against this person is brand new, has never happened before and will never happen again. So I better take advantage of it while I can. And good, the better I want to play the good players. That's what confidence is. I want to play the good players. Give me the number one seed. I want to play number one seed first round. Don't you want to be the person that takes the number one seed out in the first round? Don't you want to be that person? Don't you want to be that person? Of course you want to be that person. But you see how we're not even going in that direction because we're trying, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're keeping them on a higher level. We're keeping ourselves on a lower level. No, man. Every single human is same exact level. We're all put on this earth with an infinite capacity to create. And we are exploring that at different rates. And so you got to get focused on you exploring your infinite ability to create on the court, to express yourself fully. And the higher the play is, the better the player is. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. Being down here in South Florida, people travel all across the world, come down to South Florida, get better competition. It's a blessing. It's something you can really be grateful for. And no, if you just switch that and you just become excited to be the one that's, 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 that's stepping up in that way and showing up and cultivating that ability to show up to someone higher rank than you don't you see how you're you're becoming a bigger better badder version of yourself through that action of showing up um which again is tied to confidence so i know that was a little bit of a rant noah but hopefully that helped if you got a follow-up drop it in monica you're welcome victoria how can i stop slowing down my swing or even stopping mid-swing when the point starts getting more intense it's a pattern that I see both myself and partners I play do. Is it just something that is going to happen eventually? How can I make sure I don't hesitate? Grunt. Um, all right, let me see if I'm understanding this right. How can I stop slowing down my swing? Um, I'm not sure if I understand this question, Victoria. Chad, do you understand this? Maybe the swing is not like as fluid, you know, when it gets intense. Like the swing is choppy? Yeah. Or she might yeah, be absolutely. Tight. Yeah, yeah. So again, Victoria, we're talking about the skill of composure here. Um, we're getting really present with our body. This creates the foundation for fluid motion. Um, and again, you know, if, if we if we outline the skill of focus here, you stay connected with the present action you're taking. There's nothing to think about. You don't, you can relieve your mind of the weight of thinking about things and trying to figure things out and make things happen. We can, we can trust. Um, um, I think you said that is it just something that is going to, is going to happen eventually. Absolutely. So think about it. Like imagine you're watching like a, a, a movie on Netflix or something and just the Wi-Fi is cutting out like all the time. All right. Like you, you can't watch the movie. You can't understand what's going on now in the same way, our attention leaves the moment. And it's like the Wi-Fi signal cutting out, all right? And so all your la inability to play, lack of confidence, lack of composure, confusion, anxiety, disappointment, doubt, all of that stuff is actually, you're watching a blippy movie. You're watching, the Wi-Fi is cutting out, you're watching a blippy movie, all right? So when you bring your attention back to your body, you begin to reestablish that connection and regulate your nervous system. Those things that used to happen to you where you would have choppiness in your stroke or you'd have some kind of internal hesitation or tension within yourself, um, because you removed the source of those problems, those symptoms will actually begin to fall away. Um, and so, again, I would really emphasize that skill of composure and get really present with your body. Um, and, you know, text if you didn't text Chad's number yet, text that number, Victoria, because this, the, the composure tool it's literally going to teach you how to bring your attention into your body, feel what you're feeling. It's going to ground you. And then you can learn to play from that place. Um, but I just give you a lot of permission, Victoria, to really be grounded in your body, be present. Another question. When having an intense training session, what's a good mantra to keep myself going and never dropping my body language, even practice? Um, I don't like to use the word never. That puts so much pressure. It's so much pressure. 
Um, no one's perfect. Like no one's perfect. Um, Alcaraz's body language drops in practice. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's not, we're never going to be perfect. So what's a good mantra to keep myself going? Um, you know, again, when, when things are really intense, learning to cultivate that inner stillness is actually how we sustain that intensity. Um, for example, Everybody wants to have more explosive and be like, have more acceleration on their racket. Um, but they're not still beforehand and stillness precedes explosive. Like think of a bomb. It's completely still and it explodes. Think about a, a snake. It's completely still. Then it strikes. Think about uh, a leopard. It's completely still. And then it strikes. We're not still within ourselves. And so the physical body is disjointed. Um, it doesn't have the same kinetic flow that's moving through it, that if we can stabilize our attention, you've probably heard the phrase, the body is the creature of the mind. It's literally like whatever you're doing with your mind or your attention, if you can keep it stable, event, your body just starts to reflect that. If you don't keep your mind stable and you put it into the future, your body begins to reflect that and it gets all anxious. You keep your, your mind in the past on what did happen, your body reflects that and it gets depressed and, and lethargic. <laughs> and that's all that's happening. So when we can stabilize our attention within ourselves, and these are seven ways that we can stabilize our attention. Again, you're, you're regulating the nervous system on a fundamental level. You're wiping away stress and the symptoms of stress at a root level. Um, and so when you're having an intense training session, just roll with it. And, and again, keep the good, keep the mantra of slow down and feel, and you're, you're exploring this balance of being relaxed and intense at the same time. How else can you, let's say someone hit the drop star on you, you got to sprint, but then you have to slow down so you can get the ball over the net and, and properly execute. If you're not relaxed and intense, you won't be able to execute in that moment. So we're holding these big balances. Um, and really that's, that's uh, representative of the performance state is being able to hold the balance of relaxed and intense. Um, and again, as far as body language is concerned, body language is people think it's about how you look. Body language is actually between you and you. All right. And this is one of the most, this is one of the biggest things I can share with you. All right. There's something that you can call large scale, large scale action. And there's something you can call small scale action. Large scale action happens outside of the border of your skin. And, and small scale action happens within your body. All right. <laughs> so body like when you feel like notice how you can like you can like stand taller you see how it's this it's actually an internal action you see how my voice just got deeper it's more booming it's because i straightened my neck and i straightened my back so body language is about you and how you feel what feels good to you don't let people around you being like victoria your body language is so crappy why are you no, it's not about how you look. That's all facade stuff, man. That's the games that people play and they try to look all confident and they try to scream when they win. All of those are, are actions of fear and insecurity. Your body language is a, is, a, is, a, is a sacred thing between you and you and you learn to carry yourself the way that feels the best to carry yourself. But you see how you do it consciously. You bring your attention to your, to your posture. I would even call it posture rather than body language. Um, I don't care what my body is communicating to my partner on the other court. I don't care. I'm not, I, don't, I don't care what he thinks. <laughs> I don't care what he thinks about how my body looks. So that's, that's just, we're taking body language out of the picture. And it's about how you feel. And you can make these small scale movements inside your body where you actually cultivate your posture. And that changes your, it changes everything. It changes your physical chemistry. And so it's going to change your mentality as well. Um, boom. Ralph says, yeah, you're welcome, Victoria. Great questions. Appreciate your, your engagement. Ralph says she hesitates. Uh, she hesitates. What should she do? He was um, talking about, I think, when we were talking about Victoria and we were trying to figure out what she was saying. Oh, uh, gotcha. Was saying, like, choppy, and he was like, I, he, she hesitates, but I'm pretty sure you already answered. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, that hesitation. Um, yeah, hesitation re results when you think that there's a right and a wrong thing to do. The moment you understand that you have never played two points that were exactly the same. And you're not a spectator that's here talking about the match or a commentator. 
talking about the match. You have to be the one in the, in the body playing the match. And so if you're the one that's in the body playing the match, we don't, um, I'm not thinking in terms of right and wrong. It happens too fast. I need, I can't involve my thinking mind like that. It's not a math test. I'm here to respond and engage, respond and engage, engage, respond, engage, respond. And I can be so, uh, glued to that, that no amount of hesitation seeps in. There's nothing to hesitate about. Um, at the end of the day, like it's my present self who has to make the decision. I can't make a decision in advance for myself. So all this pre-planning that you find your mind naturally does, that's why you hesitate because things aren't going to plan. And the thing is, you start planning your match, any of you, guess what? You're 100% wrong. So don't even, don't even start to plan it. Um, cultivate the ability to be in the heat of the chaos and be able to stay calm. And when you do that, the answers and possibilities begin to reveal themselves and you have the level of clarity and physical dexterity to actually capitalize and execute on the possibilities before you. But only when you trust yourself to be in the moment and you don't attempt to control your performances by predicting what might happen or analyzing what already happened. You want to continue to direct more attention into the moment where every point is played, into your body, where all of your potential is. You want to live between body and ball where, where everything unfolds and all your potential uh, gets unlocked and expressed between body and ball. So thanks, everybody. I know we went a little bit over time. Appreciate all the questions, primarily from you, Victoria. Thanks for that. Um, but yeah, that's all we got for you guys. So we'll stay on here for as long as you guys need, if you guys got more questions, but that's it that we got for you guys. If you didn't text Chad, guys, you're missing out. 561-306-9525. You text him your name and email, we're going to give you on those badass tools. So I would do that if I were you. Pretty much everyone texted me. So I'll be getting those out tomorrow morning. Um, yeah, they're going to be sick. They're mot seven motivational meditations on these seven skills. So definitely do them. Let me know how you think about what, what how you felt, what you think. And yeah, just have a blast out there, man. That That's the luck uh, in your tournaments, guys. Uh, have fun out there. It may sound cliche, but man, having fun is a, super high performance strategy so have fun let loose and, and let it rip yeah feel you're welcome good. Victor. <laughs> feel good play good feel good play good look good you're welcome kd you're welcome holger you're welcome zuyan you're welcome you're welcome yon beautiful stuff thanks for your engagement everybody andre you're welcome Noah, you're welcome take it all in guys have a blast have a blast.